So people that complained about Boreas, this is Boreas on absolute crack, dude. She is Boreas turned up to 11. Do we have to nerf her? All right, guys, it definitely seems like we have a bit of a problem with one particular unit in the game, and that is Ingrid. Ingrid has joined the game. Obviously, she is very, very good. She is a triple S ancient exclusive legendary Lord hero with dual faction membership, not only in her faction, the Watchers, but dual faction membership in Arbiter as well. So we knew she was gonna be busted strong. I don't know if we knew she was gonna be this busted, this insanely broken and we may in fact have a problem if you do not know what i'm referring to it's arena so when she is in her solar mode and she's doing these giant blast aoe's that have limitless range they can just blast all the enemies out before they even move we're gonna get deep down in it we have an amazing video from jay and geo we're gonna inspect see what this situation is all about and then at the end i'll give my verdict does she need to be nerfed who the heck knows but one thing is for sure this, this is not a good thing. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, folks, let's get right into this. How the heck are ya? I'm Fastidious. In this video, we are reacting directly to a video from this guy and his beautiful wife, Joe. Jay and Joe, they've got a great Watch of Realms channel. I suggest you guys go check it out. Link in the description in the top and comment. Jay over here, he actually reached out to me directly asking me to watch this video, maybe review it. I said, how about I just react to it? Took me a while. A week later, I'm finally getting to it. But he says it very definitively shows the craziness that is Ingrid. To be perfectly clear, I've been hearing about it left, right, and center from everyone. But if you don't know, Jay is an absolute arena guru, arena obsessive. So he's just, you know, particularly privy to this kind of stuff. I know he removed the majority of the background music from this. This is actually an unlisted copy he sent me. So I really do appreciate it. Again, go check out their channel, especially if you like this. So let's head in. Ingrid has completely broken arena. Straight to it. Oh, mother's so there you can see, guys, when she does her big... First off, she's got unlimited range on it. I'm just going to be pausing it whenever I have to say something. But you can see, the original hits are, like, fine. They're, they're solid. It's, like, 50, 60K. But now, instantaneous 200,000-plus crits covering every single target enemy before they even move. You cannot compete against this. Your children. Let's see it again. Sheesh. Not this music's do. hilarious, too. It's, you can actually see with the unlimited range. I'll go back there for a second. She's she's actually theoretically hitting into their enemies. It's not counting, but you can actually see that blast. When, when, when they go to the next one, that was like 342k AoE. Look at this. <laughs> the AoE is, you see that? The AoE beam is reaching but all the way across the map. Other, guys. If you do not have her, you cannot compete. So, so this, is, this video Jay released, uh, let's see, already... Um, the two views this is the unlisted version. It's already up if you want to see the whole thing. Uh, definitely go check that out. But you can see it was eight days ago. Maybe it was nine days ago, the original video before the unlisted one. Already, if we look at these rankings, Ingrid is like required, a required unit. She is a necessity. And it's her with freaking Praetis. I mean, what are we even doing here? You cannot compete. So the only question that remains, though, is if you're lucky enough to have her, how do you use her? And that's what we're going to go into in this video. Because. So he's just like full stop. It's not even up for discussion. I will still very much reflect on this probably throughout the video, but certainly on, at the end, he's just saying it's over. You have her. It's like a binary, right? It's, it's, it's just like a one or the other. Do you have her? Do you not have her? And do you succeed? Do you not succeed? That's how he already saying it goes. So in this video, he's very much just making she's broken. But if you have her, this is how I'm going to help you absolutely tear things up. If you're wondering why I didn't like the video, because again, this is the unlisted one, but let's throw that unlisted a like as well. This is the let's nature see. of Ingrid herself. We will not be showing any free-to-play comps in this video. Inherently, right, if it's Ingrid content, you can't classify it as free-to-play. Obviously, you can get Ingrid free-to-play, but but she is such a exclusive, rare, pay-to-win accessible hero. So that's kind of what he's touching on there. More than really any other comp I've shown on this channel, the gear that you have on these characters is very important because it determines the timings that you have on Praetis's hammer. So he's already getting into the nitty gritty, but for people that don't know what you're looking at, like this is another reason why Praetis, it's like, 
This is, I just had Zucani on my podcast this morning and we were kind of talking about like power creep in the game and like the difference between like an insanely OP hero and a legitimately overpowered, like breaking the game hero. You can just see it with Praetis here. Like they're going for the Dallin strat, right? So I, I'm not going to rewind it, but I'll just explain. You place Dallin and then all these guys are sneaking through. So instead of having to pick them off facing down, Praetis with like his universal lightning, you press the Praetis button, instantly deleted them. I mean, already, you know, there's like two different enormous character cheat codes in this comp. It's disturbing stuff. But really, this team comp here is a balance between two factors. And one is knowing that whenever you use Praetis's hammer, you're going to... When he says the hammer, he means in the bottom left corner here, I call it the Praetis button, but it's like the Lord skill special button. Get a significant damage boost to everybody within his faction. At the same time, his hammer is best used to pick off the stragglers at the end of the round so that you can get to the next. Which is exactly what you guys saw Jay do at the start of, of this run, right? When he placed down, we had a little squeaker. He placed Praetis facing the wrong direction, but you hit that hammer button, the Praetis button, boom goes the dynamite, easy peasy. Next round as fast as possible. So and for anyone else, I know some people will ask, where is the team he's facing? He's he's doing trial runs. He's like setting a defense. So it's against a nothing defense team. So depending on what you have, your timings will be completely different. So we're only going to use Ajax's ult one time in this entire setup. He's mostly here just to give a 20% magic resistance decrease on all the enemies that come within his range. So either Jay misspoke because it's a 30% magic resistance decrease or uh, his Ajax is not, or his Ajax, he got me there. Ajax is not fully skilled up, right? Because it actually starts at 10% and it goes up to 30%. So a 30% kind of magic resistance, aka like magic defense break. If he's saying it's 20%, it must not be skilled up. Or he misspoke. I would say that these last two rounds here are the trickiest of the bunch because you're going to want to find a timing with your dragon ult here and afterwards I mean, hitting look, the hammer to pick off any stragglers look how, that were look how broken she is they just it's instant delete when she cycles so it's basically she has four normal hits and then she'll have her big special solar flame solar flare whatever it's called hit it, it just it's a full wipeout every time Works for your account same with this round here but as you guys can see though the issue <laughs> is that ingrid does all the damage so before we get to aoe dps so yeah, uh, just to pick it up, and I gotta give a huge shout out to Jay and Joe, as if I haven't already this video, but if you don't, if you ever feel like sometimes my content can be a bit long in the tooth, and I yap and I ramble, perhaps even this video will be that. Who knows? That's what you're signing up for if you want my stuff. If you want a more manageable package, all their videos are in this range, 4 minutes, 58 seconds. They're, all of their videos are like 4 to 10 minutes long, so I really appreciate that, and for me, if you guys like this, I'll react to their stuff all the time, because uh, it's perfect, like, react length, you know? I want to talk about a few things. First off, the gear on this is not perfect. It's I do not, not have all. the best gear, and I do not have the best artifacts. Wow. This is cr his artifacts are very, very... Dude, I'm sorry, Jay. I don't mean to roast you, but with how competitive you are in Arena, I mean, it just goes to show you the power of characters. From what I've seen so far, if this is his best gear and these are his best artifacts, my account is like four times stronger, but uh, I don't have a single one of these guys, so... But this should give you a I've very heard. good idea of what you should shoot for. So both of the setups you're going to see here in Arena are actually from a really good player who is currently third in the world and finished last week in the top 10. Heidi has been super cool and helpful. And if you guys... So yeah, like I said, Jay and Joe, but Jay's really like the true Arena lover. Uh, he's deep in it, right? So he's talking to like the big arena masterminds and stuff like that. So if you want that all the time, you're not getting it here. So go check them out. See him in game. Make sure to give him some love. At the time of filming this video, AOE arena has not happened yet. So this team is mostly speculative. Well, it has happened now and I can tell you she's completely broken for it. And you're about to see why. So if you don't know on AOE arena, we have those big delays when they come out. And she obviously completely exploits it. But I personally believe that this team will do very well in the meta, if not extreme, right. extremely similar. So the extremely important part of this team. So there's the blast. And sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt you again, Jay. Something people might also not understand. Uh, let me just He's go back to where he places Ingrid. Similar. Team will do very well. So you can see it's, it, it's like there for just a moment. He, he places so fast. Personally you can see she's got that straight line range. Well, in 
you saw it there for a second, like Dahlia or like a platform version of like what Valkyra has. However, you might be wondering, these units that are about to come out, I'm just going to mm-hmm. mute him for a second. Uh, you'll see they fill up both lanes here. So how does she just delete them all? Actually, when she does her big blast, like the every fifth attack, and it is every other attack uh, when she's in the overlord state, overload state um, from her A3, if you can get her that high, that's the ultimate pay to win. However, if I pull Ingrid, I've got the Soul Stones, I will do it instantaneously. Uh, it, it widens to actually be an endless shot, three, three tile columns wide. So it's not just that single line, it's this line under it and that line above. That's what makes her so broken for this, so broken for Guild Wars, so broken for a lot of things. So here's how you're going to want to time it. On her fourth... But here's another thing with Ingrid, right? I mean, sorry to keep interrupting, but also I want I want to give my thoughts on the actual situation. Um... He's not even ulted once. He's not used the ultimate once with Ingrid because you don't have to. Her ultimate is just for switching her phases, right? So she has her solar mode and her stellar mode, aka respectively her AOE mode and her single target mode. You're never leaving the AOE mode. So GG, you're done. You just leave it like that. So even as he gets into like the technical nuance of this comp, Ingrid herself and the way any normal player would use her, not for this very kind of high level apex push, top whatever percent of arena, top you know, going all the way up there, top 100, top 50, whatever it's going to be. For any normal player, she's the ultimate dumb brain melted, turn everything off, just place her and be done with it thing. You don't have to do anything. She's like a full auto thing since it's all basic attacks, right? Basic attacks and then the things that contingent upon her passive and little circumstances like that. There's no old thing. There's no nothing. So even though Jay is getting into some nice technical nuance, it's about Praetis and timing out the Praetis button, the, the hammer and stuff. It is not stuff having to actually do with Ingrid. She is broken, broken, stupid, broken, easy mode for Arena. And it really is like going to, it has already become a haves and have nots in Arena of like Ingrid and really Ingrid and Praetis and then no Ingrid or really neither. Um, so let's get back into it. I'll give my big overall thoughts at the end. Let's let him go for a bit. Attack, you're gonna wanna press his hammer. So her fifth will do a lot more damage. So this team is unbeatable in the beginning. The first three rounds disappear if you get your timings correct. The thing is, though, that in autos, the time... Sorry, just to get even more into how broken not just Ingrid, but this team comp is, he's not even deploying Praetis. He's just using the hammer button, because why not? Because Praetis does not have to be deployed for this to be in effect over here. So, insanely stupid. Timings can go awry, but... Towards the end of the match is when things get a bit difficult because you do not have healing on your fighters. As you can see though, at the second half of the match, trying to time Ingrid's attacks is just not going to work because the autos are going to be all over the place at that point. So unless you're manually doing it, I wouldn't worry about that. What you just need to worry about is how you handle every- well, There's nothing to time with Ingrid's attacks. You're not, you're doing anything. Everybody else's ults. So look, here's the thing. As you guys will see at the end of this match, the person who does by far the most damage is Ingrid. It's not even close. So what's going to happen here? Are they going to nerf her? I don't know, but something does need to happen because she is single-handedly ruling two, all by herself, two sections of arena. I do have to to say, and I, maybe he's done this since, or I know he did a vis- video with Destined as well. Also, stop, sorry to keep saying he, but this is obviously just a J video, not 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 as J and Joe as some of their other content. Uh, but I will say, I, I feel like this isn't t- telling the whole story because this is still like a crazy, perfect, you know, very very optimal meta comp. She doesn't need that. She really doesn't like, especially if you're not at the very high levels, she just still does all this stuff with like nothing. I think you basically will need a like a, like a probably a, a Sirene. If not, you can just use like a Dallin, someone to get some quick early costs. And she is so expensive at 25. But aside from that, unless it's in another incredibly perfect comp where they also have an Ingrid and a Praetis or something, you don't like this comp would beat me every time with, with that, with just Ingrid. You know, because I, I don't have the comp to match. I think that's the point to really hammer home. Who knows? Maybe he's about to do it. Look, the thing is that <laughs> Ingrid is legitimately scary. Uh, she dominates both game modes. There is no competition. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed our little 
epic music thing that we had going on here. I don't know. I thought it'd be fun. Um, but we got the no music this version. Fun video. It really does help because it makes YouTube all kinds of happy. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. And hopefully. Uh, kind of stole my line there, but then again, who doesn't say that at the end? Do you see that subscribe on the screen? Absolutely go subscribe to Jay and Joe. We can leave it right there. Uh, I don't want to have, make him keep him with that face going. So let's move back over here so we can get into the game. I guess the, the, the big thing, I think he demonstrated the way it works perfectly, right? And that can be applied to this non-super meta squad. Obviously not with the exact same success, but against any normal team, it just it completely obliterates. It's really silly, silly mode. Now that I'm in game, I just want to show you so you can see when deployed, she enters the solar mode, launching four basic attacks, uh, and then the next basic attack will be solar flare. So it's like 20% of her basic attacks. It's four normal, which are quite strong. You can see over here, it's like a nice big AOE up to eight enemies. And then the fifth one is this crazy solar flare. So what is that? And I'm not talking about stellar mode because the way you use and abuse her currently in anti-arena and in AoE, strictly is in her AoE mode, aka her solar mode. It's 270% AoE damage in uh, two up to 15 enemies in a wide front range. And that wide is that key thing. So it's not the single column of tiles. It's three wide. It is endless range. It is completely nasty. And as we've seen, it's like a total, total cheat code. I did speak to A3. I want to show you that as well. During the solar overload and the stellar overload. So in, when you're using her either way, the only thing we're really talking about here is the solar overload mode but it's gonna reduce the number of basic attacks to trigger the talent from four, so it's four on and then one, to every other. So it's just, you just need one to trigger it. So instead of it being four and then you get your solar flare, it is one solar flare, one solar flare, one so you get it. So anyone with an A3 Ingrid, if you haven't faced them yet in Arena, I have not yet just because I avoid them like the plague, uh, you get it. It is insanity. She is so, 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 so good, so good at this. And it's not, good isn't even the word. She is completely game-breaking. So people that complained about Boreas, this is Boreas on absolute crack, dude. She is Boreas turned up to 11. Do we have to nerf her? That is the question everyone's coming to me. And you literally can't. You can't. Boreas was a normal hero. He was too strong. No normal hero should be that completely broken in a game mode. I was very on the fence about it at the time. I have the receipts. I don't care what any of you guys say. To this day, everyone's blaming me for Boreas. At the very least, the, the width of that range, he was like this, but to a slightly lesser D, but completely busted open two game modes, particularly anti-air arena, and it was strictly not competitive. The way, the way they nerfed him, I'm not so thrilled about it, but he does still remain an excellent hero. And to me, it was palatable. It was acceptable because at the end of the day, you had this normal hero. And when I say normal, they can be summoned from the blue and yellow summons, the rare summoning crystals and the divine legendary summoning crystals. That that was like such a crazy thing that a hero like that could be better than anything else in the game. And that's what it was at the point. They got away with the nerf because they made a huge mistake. They play tested poorly and he came out completely overcooked and completely broken. They tracked it back. Some people were furious. Some people quit. Some people got it. Who cares? We came up. I think the vast majority of us realized it was the right thing to do, at least to some extent. I don't know if they did it the exact right way. I think they could have just brought in the range and called it a day. But, you know, they found a solution and we all most of us were able to still sleep at the end of the day. Right. We could still not be tossing and turning in bed with Ingrid. She is broken to a new level. Uh, and I suggest if you don't believe me, go try to fight her. Good luck. If you're going at her with a normal team, you know, when I say normal, I mean, not an Ingrid and Praetis team. Go see, she's completely, completely busted. It really is a strictly check you have her, X you don't have her, right? So why do I say she can't be nerfed? Uh, it's as simple as this. Boreas could be a taint. You know, it could maybe cost you a few hundred bucks if you were paid to win, it could maybe cost you a couple thousand bucks. That's not the situation with Ingrid. Just to get the one copy on her banner, people were spending thousands of dollars. To get her with multiple awakenings, people spent far more than that. And I know that's kind of crazy to hear, but the situation with Boreas was some... Low spenders all the way up to Krakens might have spent some money and then felt gypped when they nerfed Boreas for better or for worse. I'm not even making a judgment call on that right now. However, you're talking probably on average maybe a couple hundred dollars per player. That's a, not a good thing. That is not a healthy thing, but that's very different than what went down with Ingrid, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per some players. And on the whole, it probably brought in over $100,000 to the game. You can't renege on that. Sure, they could say we didn't foresee how broken she would be in Arena. 
I don't think that's going to make a difference to someone that spent $10,000 trying to get her. You can roast those people in the comments if you want. I'm not saying I support it or I'm against it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying it is the reality of the situation we're in. I literally don't think a nerf on her could ever be swallowed by the community. Um, so what is the solution? Well, I was talking with Jay before filming this, and he was saying it's only going to get worse with new maps that are coming and the new extra competitive competitiveness coming to Arena with the the new kind of introduction of an increased focus upon Apex. If you don't know, we're getting an Apex shop, which is the only way to to access a very exclusive legendary Arbiter hero, Sanja, Sonya, whatever you want to call her. And for that, Arena is going to become a much more you know hot and competitive place. That's only going to make this issue more pronounced. The only way I could see fixing it is the map. And you know, maybe, and you can't just say like, oh, we changed all the maps now because Ingrid was too good. I think maybe you cycle through maps. And if you get stuck with this current version of the map, you're like, all right, it's Ingrid week. I'm out, I'm done. And you take the L if you don't have her. I think that's something people could maybe stomach, but you can't just leave it like this. I think I've always thought with Arena, just to keep it fresh, every week or maybe bi-weekly, every other week, we should get just completely different maps. We've been doing this kind of like, two parallel, like a C and a backward C, you know, you and then the enemy for so long. We need more interesting things. I think this can be the catalyst and a lot of good can come out of this because if it stays like this, 66% of arena is dominated by this chick right here. And I think that is atrocious for the game. I think that is going to be very toxic in the community and not be a very healthy thing for all of us. Let me know what you guys think. I told you the video would be long, isn't it always? Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, definitely go check out Jay and Joe. Again, links in the description, the top in comment. I've been Fasidious. Hit that notification bell, subscribe, share with your mother, and I'll see you real soon. Bye. Fast idiots.